uh, after I finished it, I looked at it, and this is my mindset these days. I was like, hmm, this will this will make a good bag for used toilet paper. Good morning, day 34, and a very cold morning. I woke up several times throughout the night. Just couldn't go back to sleep. I was cold. I pulled my puppy on, uh, like just over my chest and shoulder, and uh, I think I fell asleep. I just I have no idea. <laughs> I feel like I stayed awake all night, but I I know that time couldn't have flown that quickly. So, but I ate breakfast now. It's time to pack up and get going. <laughs> it's another day with ice all over the inside of the tent. Uh, so one of my water bottles had a layer of ice on the top inside the tent, so it must be pretty cold outside. So, first things first, I actually take off my pants when I get into my quilt. Um, I, I like to sleep in my running shorts. I use my running shorts as underwear, basically. And my legs were not cold at all. My legs just run warm. So first, got to put my pants back on. <laughs> Um, I take off my pants and I actually just sleep with my legs on top of my pants. So in the morning, my pants aren't super cold when I put them on. So I'll do that. I got to put my water filter in my jacket pocket. I'm going to hike with my rain jacket this morning. And I know it's, it's super cold today. So I'm going to keep my water filter close to my body this time, not inside my pack. And, uh, once I pack up everything, I actually have to then wipe down all the ice. It's going to be cold for several days in a row, so um, it's important to control that ice so it doesn't just get worse and worse. Because when it's cold, I mean, it's getting warm enough that ice is going to melt. It just, it's not going to be warm enough that it's going to dry out very easily. So the less ice there is in the tent to dry out after it melts the better it is. So let's do that. Here's a little sample. Yeah. Packing up my tent and it's funny is you pull the stakes out and it has mud on it and the mud's still soft. You leave it outside for a little bit and it's all frozen. Everything's frozen. I'm just gonna pack it up. It's hard to scrape off right now because it's so frozen on and get going. My fingers are starting to get too cold. This is a tank that I was gonna originally go to and I wound up being pretty close to. And it's wound up about 23 miles, 22.8. Look at the ice on it, can you see it? <laughs> it's. I thought it'd be more frozen actually considering how cold it is, but at least the mud around it's probably frozen so it's probably easier to get to now. You see a lot of dead elk bones here and there, but this one's a big collection of them. Look at that big rib. Vertebrae, lots of ribs, scapulas. A lot of them, they're so white. A lot of bones everywhere. But then again, there are a lot of elk. Just earlier today, I saw at least 20 run by. Pretty far away though. Lots of elk. Most of the forest up here is really healthy, but all of a sudden we just walked into this big burn area pretty burned at least it's not too big though like you could see living trees past the burned areas it's really fortunate I guess that it just kind of burned in this little area and then just stopped for whatever reason so earlier this morning everything was so cold that everything was frozen all the mud was frozen so it was actually a really rough terrain but I was making really good time but the sun's been out for a little while now so all the mud's thawed out and it's been quite muddy quite muddy I don't even see snow in some areas but the trail is still muddy I saw the weather yesterday I had service at my campsite and I saw this Flagstaff it was snowing and then I looked at the radar and it looked like snow came towards Mormon Lake and kind of dissipated after so whatever geographical layout occurs up there I think past Mormon Lake is going to be a lot muddier than it is here. So I guess I'll have to prepare for that. This morning as I was hiking and my fingers are freezing, I was thinking to myself, do I want four nights of this like I had planned and get there Friday? 
so four mornings or do I want to go a few extra miles every day and have three mornings of this and get to Lackstaff Thursday afternoon vice Friday morning early and I thought yeah let's try to get there Thursday afternoon I know it's nice to be able to try to get an early check-in and have more time at the hotel but I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna take a double zero just to take a break it'd be like a little break from the vlogging too and I, there's a lot of other chores I want to do like I have to go to REI and get ready for the last 200 miles but uh I do think I want to do a few extra miles and only have three nights out here. In fact, past Mormon Lake, I have the option of doing two nights or three nights. I think that was what I said before in my head. Because <sighs> I'm doing, definitely doing one night before I get to Mormon Lake. But yeah, two versus three north of here. I think I would rather take two nights, well, two mornings. It's the nights that aren't that bad. It's cold, but the mornings are hard. This is quite funny. There's a bunch of steps in the snow, and all of a sudden it branches. Some go left, some go right. Left looks like a trail. Right looks more like a trail. Now, oddly enough, over here, kind of looks like a trail, probably just from animals. I'm gonna guess right, but I'm gonna check gut hooks. I'm gonna just walk that way a little bit. And then uh, maybe I'll throw a branch over the left one or something. Cause I originally went left until I thought this looks weird. Does that look good enough? Cause right's the right way. So at least the branches will make people think maybe. But let's hope that that brings me enough karma points to not get snowed on tonight. Yeah. But this is the right way. So one of the songs I listen to is Everything is Awesome from the first Lego movie. It's a really catchy song. And I think that was one of the last songs I heard yesterday night. Because today I was kind of humming it and I was like, you know what? I think it'll fit with the terrain right now. Like, instead of Everything is Awesome, it's Everything is Muddy. Everything is muddy when you're on the AZT. Kind of like that, huh? And I was thinking of another, some other verses. Like, the deserts were so dry you were happy to be through. Who'd have guessed that the mud would later take your shoes? Right? That's all I got. <sighs> but yeah, everything's... Maybe awesome is too strong a word. Everything's okay. Since the sun is behind me, you get to watch the trail as I talk. Now the plan today, I was gonna get water at Pine Spring, which is about 12 miles from where I camped. And I'm, I'll be there pretty soon. But uh, it's, it's a 10 minute walk away, 10 minute back. That's 20 minutes. That's easily a mile to a quarter of a mile wasted. Um, Beyond that, it looks like the only water sources mentioned at all in gut hooks from 2020 because nobody's filling out water reports are these tanks. And the tanks are, I mean, I think a lot of them are going to be reliable. It looks like most of them have water except the ones that just geologically just can't hold water anymore. But uh, I think uh, I just don't want to have to go to those water tanks because they are so muddy just to get to the water just and it's just gonna be a nightmare so I think I'm gonna put faith I've been seeing pools of water here and there where it's kind of like an old wash type situation like a hill on the left and a, and a crook and uh, I even saw running water like a liter a minute earlier with two huge pools easy to collect so I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna try to get to one of these pools. I think one's gonna come up even after the spring. And I'm gonna bypass the spring. And uh, I'll see if I make the right decision. If not, I'll have to go to one of those tanks. 
but it's just 20 minutes off trail is such a long time. Um, all this mud is really slowing me down as well. Like this part's really nice, but uh, it's been very muddy. So yeah, I think I'm gonna bypass Pine Spring. It's always one of those things like, did you make the right decision? Are you going to make the right decision? Are you gonna pay for it later? Or is it gonna pay off? I don't know. I like to get within three to four miles of the Mormon Lake turn off because it's a one mile downhill as well. That way, that's two hours if I leave at 7.30, be there by 9.30, get what I need and uh, take off. And then if I get up to the trail by 10.30, I will be doing quite well. In fact, here's another example of just random water source. It's about as clean as a typical tank, but deep enough to collect water from. I think I'm going to go about five more miles before I collect water because when I collect it, it's going to be for a dry camp wherever I am. Crazy meadow here. Is the trail's over there. It's out in the sun. There's no shade anywhere, but it's still all muddy. There must have been just a ton of snow up here, and you can see out at the tree line at the far side of the meadow how much snow there is in the trees. I'm hoping we stay out in the open because once we're in the trees, it's gonna be harder to navigate again. But it's just so much mud. Even with full on sun, that's crazy. There are these little yellow flowers popping up everywhere. Just here and there randomly, nothing concentrated. New though. I'm near a tank called Bergman tank or something like that, but check out the stream. I think this is all flowing into it, but it's flowing really well. It's quite crazy actually. Don't even bother going to the tank. Just fill up here. I mean, there's a trail right there. You have to hop over the stream anyway. But uh, the tank I think is over there. There's like a little dark area towards those power towers. But look at that water. I still have about 12.4 miles to camp. So I think I'm gonna wait about four or five more miles. And if I see water after that, I'll filter and carry because I'll be filtering well, I'll be carrying four and a half liters because I want to do an overnight after that. So, but this is great water. This here must be Bargman Tank, Bargman Park Tank. It's actually so full that there's an outlet <laughs> and it's flowing to the left there. And there's more water coming down here, connecting to it and flowing left. It's just gushing water everywhere. Water paradise. Feast or famine, right? Watch, it won't be anything for a long time. But I would just, uh, yeah, filter off the stream. It looks like you can get to the tank. It's so full, I don't even see any mud on the sides. That's insane. Okay, this one is the stream feeding the tank. And the other one is the overflow. But it's coming in pretty well too. So wherever it's coming from, it's high ground on the right. So I think it's going to get fed for quite a while pretty nice water source best tank yet yeah so around this area there's a lot of these man-made basically pools but they call them tanks but now i was wondering like if they spell it or if they pronounce it like the spanish way is it tanks are people gonna tell me i'm pronouncing tanks wrong is it tanks let's see well i've gone 12.7 miles per day so far it's one o'clock yeah, we might have like nine miles. I'm running low on water, so I'm just going to stop and actually filter two liters really quickly just to have water and I could just like drink liberally, not have to ration it out. And then I'll probably filter water a little six, seven miles on later on, just before camp probably. But uh, there's a lot of water, so I guess not much to worry about. It's just weird that when some of the tanks are dry, it made me kind of worry that uh, water was really slim, but there's still so much snow out here and it's just pouring down the trails, pouring down everything. So as of today, anyway, it's, there's a lot of water. These things are awesome. This bag is net weight four ounces, but it's 800 calories. It's 200 calories an ounce, which is amazing. Ultralight hiker food and it tastes so good. But uh, after I finished it, I looked at it and this is my mindset these days. I was like, 
Hmm. This will this will make a good bag for used toilet paper. Yeah. I hope nobody really likes uh, academia nuts and sees this on my pack and grabs it. Okay, breaks over. Got a bunch of water. Drank a bunch of water. It's 1.30 now, so we're going to try to go nine miles. I think at two miles an hour, it's going to be about six o'clock, I think. But uh, that should be good. That's going to be like a 22-mile day, so that's good. And it's only like three miles more to Mormon Lake, so it should be a, I should be able to get there pretty early in the morning, no problem. So that's good. I don't want to get too close because I don't want to get there too early. But uh, yeah, so that's plan. The uh, timeline looks good. And the trail is still a little muddy here and there, but uh, eh, kind of adapt to it. And I'm actually making decent speed even with the mud. But at some point, though, I have to stop for more water. So I'm going to take uh, 10 minutes or so. So uh, I'll see you on the trail. Look how cool it looks over here. To think, just like 10 days ago, we were in the desert. 15 days ago? I don't know. Insanity. Insanity. There was just so much snow melt that off on the left, there's actually a really hard stream and it breaks up into like four different streams that cross the trail. There's just water everywhere. This is a trail right here, by the way. It's a lot of these same things right now. It's kind of slowing me down. Is there'd be a little patch of trail and then a big patch of snow and everything's kind of melting right now. So it's uh, you post hole and it's all slushy. But clear spot, more snow. And then sometimes there are streams underneath so you have to be careful and hope your feet don't go through and go into the stream. And sometimes the snow goes right into the trail with the trails a stream. You have to go around pretty, pretty slowing. There's so much snow in this area here. There's a lot of times where we wind up off trail, footsteps kind of wander around. I don't know if I could get to where I really intended to today. I might be a little short because it takes time to figure out where you are and everything too. Let alone just walking on this takes time. <sighs> All kinds of challenges. Look how much snow is everywhere if you look around. I'm not sure if it'll ever clear up before we get to our camp. I've been severely lost over there for a long time. I think I finally found the trail again, but there's so much snow you can't see anything. I think the trail's right there, but it goes right into the snow again, so we're lost again. But we have to skirt this hill and slightly go up, so I guess I'll figure something out. I pulse told like above my knee earlier. No fun. We have just been off trail, just post holding like crazy. It's just been so much snow up here there's hardly any sign of trail just peeps footprints are everywhere and when you post hole it's past your knees right now it's it's exhausting and we were on the um, east and northeast side of a hill but that explains that and we're hitting, starting to hit the north side it's so tempting to just pull over and just set up tent and then tomorrow morning when everything's frozen over just put on micro sykes and go smoothly over everything but uh i think once we hit the north side here it's a gentle north slope there's gonna be no more snow so that would be incredibly <laughs> saddening if you set up camp already and you put on your micro spikes and then all of a sudden there's no snow but i keep thinking that the snow's gonna be over but it's just a lot of snow more snow and uh, of course my feet are wet but no longer muddy but between snow the trail is muddy so Whew, it's just a lot of work a lot of work but uh, I, I'm optimistic there'll be less snow coming up here on the north slope gentle north slope ah. every once in a while cloud covers the sun and it gets cold but it's just non-stop snow and a little bit of trail snow and a little bit of trail and each time we get snow it goes up like a foot and a half too and you just post hole non-stop. It's just so tiring. I might not even get to where I planned for initially when I was being more conservative. So exhausting. This is tough. It's still been really rough. So my plans are changing. 
It's four o'clock now and the place I originally planned was 4.5 miles away. I'm not gonna make that before six at this pace, maybe seven at this pace. And there's not even a guarantee that there's gonna be any dry spots there to camp. It just, on gut hooks, people said there's camping there. We don't know. So I'm changing it. After 5.30, I'm just gonna stop at wherever first dry level camps that I see. I'll still be able to see really well. And I think I'll be able to spot the dry spots well. If I push it past dark, it'll be so hard to spot dry level spots. And there's still so much snow and mud. I think 5.30 is good. Uh, I, I'm just gonna be a couple miles short probably of where I want to be. Probably gonna be like four miles short of where I really wanted to be when I was more optimistic. Good side is in the morning everything will be frozen and I'll, I'll make good time. And it's not gonna get too warm during the day tomorrow, so hopefully uh, I'll make even better time as long as it doesn't snow more. <laughs> There's so many uncertain things right now. But uh, yeah, hour and a half more of hiking and I'm just gonna find a spot. It's just, you just have to adapt to ever-changing conditions. <sighs> I was looking at Gaia to see the topographic information better because it presents it a little better and gut hook seems to. And I was like, oh no, I want holy beep because there was a huge hill and we were gonna go to the east of it and along the north of it. And almost, uh, well, you know. But then I checked, checked gut hooks and they rerouted it to the southern side and the western side. And you could see the old Arizona Trail was, went to the east and then the north. Good on you, AZTA. Very, very wise decision. Very wise decision. In case you're wondering why, because the north side will be covered in snow and northeast side will also have a lot of snow. Just like the previous hill that I battled where I was just walking through snow forever. But south side, better. West, better. Much better. Good choice. Here's the Arizona Trail. What do you think? Flowing maybe a gallon a minute or more all the way down the trail you know what that means we're going up it means there's a lot of snow up there we just kind of went up a little steep climb but there were a lot of dry patches off the sides and big patches of snow and the trail as you can see on the right here is just flowing it's so easy to just make reasons to just stop and just set up the tent so easy in fact if I wasn't vlogging would I stop would I just set up my tent and wait for everything to freeze over so it'd be a lot easier to walk on in the morning I don't know I actually might <laughs> I got all these people tracking my inReach and tracking what would they think if I stopped with only 16 miles for today, right? It's just... Uh, I thought... I thought I lost a lot of weight. And I thought... I think I got it under control. I may lose a little more, but that's okay. But I think it's just every day, one reason or another, there's just so much exertion... exertion that uh, I'm gonna lose like five more pounds before I get to Flagstaff. There's no way not to. Even if I buy a ton of food at, at Mormon Lake, it's just so exhausting. We have a steep down, there's some switchbacks. I don't think this is the trail exactly, but the trail seemed to go here. So time to make a run for it and uh, find it, find a trail down there somewhere. We should see a gate 0.2 miles somewhere. There's the big hill. You can kind of see taller trees. That's where the hill is anyway. And here is the trail. We are heading north on the west side of it. And we got little patches like this. I'm sure on the east and north side, it is probably blanketed in snow. I mean, even here, there's a lot of snow because all the trees making shade, but way better than it could be probably over there. 
AZTA, thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so much for doing something so nice to the hikers and all you trail maintainers making this trail, although there was already a trail, a miserable trail. Thank you so much. So much. Look how nice it is. Oh my gosh. It's 5.30. I only made it 18.3 miles so far. But I'm just going to find the next dry spot to camp. The sun's getting really weak even though it's uh, got an hour and a half or so. It's just some wispy clouds blocking it. My feet are soaking wet. I have a feeling I could wrench out my socks and they'll be dripping wet. And I just got enough water so I'm ready for camp. It looks like I have some more to walk through. <laughs> it's going to be bad. And my feet are getting cold. And I actually resorted to my rain jacket and I think I'm going to keep it on because Again, the sun's not as strong as it was and it's getting cold. So I'm going to put my gloves on once I put this phone away. But 18.3, 18.5 miles, not the best. But um, that's what it is. So let's find camp. It's a little wavy, not flat, but flat enough where I know I can sleep and not slide off a sleeping pad. We're actually pretty close to some trailhead. But uh, there's actually very few places where there aren't rocks covering everything. So I'm very happy to be here. I'm going to put my head on that side and sleep facing this way, I believe. And I will sleep well, I think. Let's hurry up and uh, set up. I'm taking off my shoes. Liquids. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is the uh, romanticized version of through hiking, or maybe some part that the hikers don't talk about. Huh, not bad. All right, let's get these sandals on. One of the things I do each night is put oatmeal in here. Now, all my oatmeal and grits and stuff, I just kind of put in this. I have no idea what's in this bag. I have no idea what flavors. I just, whatever I get, I just toss in there. So there's some grits in there, some blueberry, and I saw some like apricot or peach things in there. And I know there's um, like maple, but yeah, I just mix it all in. <laughs> I never care. Hello. I ate, brushed my teeth, and did everything. I'm ready to go to bed. Just thought I'd share with you how I'm going to sleep. It's going to be another super cold night out, and it, the high I saw it was going to be 42 Fahrenheit tomorrow. The high. So, yeah, it's going to be really cold. So I'm actually sleeping with my puffy on. It's a blue one. But I'm going to keep it unzipped, and that way my body won't overheat. And if at some point overnight I get really cold, I'll zip it all up. I'm also going to pull the shema over my face, so... I'm, not gonna, I'm also going to pull my hat down a little so there's just like a tiny sliver for my eyes. And uh, yeah, but oddly enough, of course, I'm not wearing socks. <laughs> my feet never really get that cold. And uh, I'm also wearing shorts because uh, my legs also usually stay pretty warm. But my, it's, it's my upper body that gets really cold. So... Last night I woke up a bunch of times because my shoulders were all cold and I couldn't warm them up. So I pulled my fleece, no, I pulled my puffy into my quilt and just kind of threw it over me, but it didn't work out too well. So I, th I thought today I would just wear it and uh, preemptively keep my shoulders warmer, my baby shoulders. So that's it for today. Um, I only did like 18.9 miles or something. It's that snow. Oh. I don't know if you all know, but when the snow is frozen, it's easy to walk on. You just walk over, walk over. It's like walking on a sidewalk, like a curved sidewalk. But as it gets warmer and warmer throughout the day, as you walk, you just, you'll be walking and all of a sudden your legs will just sink right in and that's post holing. And that happens more frequently as it gets warmer. So as the day goes on, it gets worse and worse. So... 
tomorrow morning because the high is so low i i'm hoping that if we hit snow we'll be just breezing right over it and also it's gonna be so cold tonight that tomorrow morning i hope to be just walking all over everything like ice mud maybe i'll get as good a time as i did this morning because i did 10 miles by 11:30, so it's great when everything's frozen one bit of advice to you all too is if you know that overnight it's going to be like super cold like 20 degrees fahrenheit cold you probably won't be able to filter water in the next morning for several hours so filter extra during the afternoon or the evening that way you have some for the morning I generally don't like to filter when it's super cold because my fingers basically freeze and then you have to tend to your filter so it doesn't freeze. Like after you're done with it, you got to put it inside your jacket right away. So it's kind of a hassle, but yes, the filter is sleeping with me in the quilt again, super cold. So that's it. Y'all have a good night and uh, I will be at Borman Lake tomorrow. Bye.